am a nerd. I have been from the very beginning. <laughs> Whether it was sitting at home watching Discovery Channel and Star Trek and Stargate with my dad and enjoying it the whole time to the first day of kindergarten where I came home crying because I could not read yet and I wanted to know how to read so that I could do it on my own. And it only got worse as the years went by. Whenever I was 10 years old, for Halloween, I went as Legolas, a character that was not very popular at the time, but was extremely nerdy and was also a boy. <laughs> um, and I continued to dwell in this nerdiness, even being delighted in getting books for Christmas presents. But as I got through middle school and high school, I realized that there weren't that many people like me at my school, which kind of made me feel alone in my nerdiness. I mean, there were a few people, but there's a variety of different kinds of nerds, and I wasn't one who played video games or played card games, so I kind of stood out from the rest of even the nerd community. Whenever I got into college, however, I discovered a huge group of people that were exactly like me on Facebook, on YouTube, and in person. And they have led me to realize that nerds are fantastic people despite what society says. So, for the sake of this presentation, nerds and geeks will be referred to as the same thing. They are very similar, but slightly different, but for today we're just going to call them nerds. For th so, let's look at what exactly the dictionary defines a nerd as. Uh, Merriam-Webster dictionary says that a nerd is a person who behaves awkwardly around other people, or is unstylish, or someone who is very interested in technical subjects, such as electronics and computers. Now, I'm not very into electronics in my, myself. I am awkward, but I don't consider myself that unstylish. <laughs> so, let's listen to some people who are nerds themselves define it. John Green, who is an author, a video maker, a learner, and very much a nerd, said once, Nerds like us are allowed to be unironically enthusiastic about stuff. Nerds are allowed to love stuff, like jump up and down in your chair, can't control yourself, love it. When people call people nerds, it's mostly what they're saying is, you like stuff, which is not a good insult at all. Like, you are too enthusiastic about the miracle of human consciousness. <laughs> or, in simpler words, but the same words, nerd life is just so much better than regular life. Simon Pegg, who starred in a Star Trek movie recently, uh, said that being a geek is all about being honest about what you enjoy, um, and so on. Being a geek is extremely liberating, which is a statement that I very much agree, agree with. John Barlin, who was an actor and was in Doctor Who and Torchwood, which are very nerdy shows, uh, was uh, confronted by someone saying, that they were sorry for being a nerd when they were asking me a question, but he replied, don't ever apologize for being a nerd. Not here and not on the outside. Don't ever apologize for being a nerd, because the non-nerds never apologize for being, well, not so nice. <laughs> <laughs> a big thing about nerds is that nerds love to learn. We're constantly learning and seeking out new situations where we can continue learning outside of school. Uh, Albert Einstein said, learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow. The important thing is to not stop questioning and people who are nerds are continually questioning. Um, these are the, a variety of YouTube channels, places where nerds and people who enjoy learning go online. They're used in classrooms and just because people like them. Um, SciShow about science, Crash Course about history, TED, which is speeches about all kinds of subjects, Vsauce, which a answers very strange questions, an idea channel put out by PBS, which is very similar to Vsauce. All of these are in the millions of people that have subscribed, Vsauce being the most, at almost 8 million people watching on a regular basis. This doesn't count the people who don't have YouTube accounts that watch them anyway. Coming up the other side of the spectrum, television, which is a lot more widely accessed, we have 98 million American households that watch the History Channel. PBS reaches 27 million viewers per year, and Discovery Channel has 431 million homes watching in 170 countries. Nerds also read a lot, which means there is a huge demand for books. This year alone, 
over two million books will be published. And nerds will be reading all of them. <laughs> <laughs> nerds are also very innovative. They change the way we think about things in order to solve problems. Uh, Albert Einstein also said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. And a big problem solver for nerds is the fact that we're using the internet for a lot of this. Um, Bill Gates said, the internet is becoming the town square for the global village of tomorrow, and nerds are definitely the main populace of that town square. From the silly things like uh, this guy, Zay Frank, who organized a group of people to do many things, one of which was to create a world sandwich, finding exact points on the globe and placing slices of bread at those points, taking pictures and uploading them. And John Green, another person, um, a leader of a group called the Nerd Fighters, uh, they created a, oh, I don't like, because they were fans of the Wimbledon team for the AFC, they sponsored the team so that they could stay in the league and stay on uh, the video game FIFA, and even got their logo put on uh, various things. Then there's the online things that actually make a difference. Tab for a cause, which you sign up for, and then every time you open a tab in the browser, it donates money. They've donated over $61,000 since the, their beginning. Change.org allows for various petitions to be signed for various causes and has more than 77 million users. Kiva allows for loans that go to people in countries mainly third world countries, to help them create businesses and things. It would not be possible without the internet, and has raised, has loaned out $600 million, all of which has been paid back. Uh, then there's the charities that have formed specifically from nerd groups, being This Star Won't Go Out because of uh, the nerd fighter Esther Earl, the Harry Potter Alliance based on the Harry Potter books, and the Foundation to Decrease World suck uh, from the nerd fighters. Nerds have even created their own sub subculture from music. Uh, some examples being Hank Green, who writes songs about science, uh, Chameleon Circuit, who writes songs about Doctor Who, all caps that talk about zombies and robots and monsters in their music, and even an entire genre of wizard rock based off of the Harry Potter books. And nerds, despite the fact that a lot of us are introverts, have a tendency to want to get together in a group. So we have big things like VidCon and ComicCon and even more across the nation that draw thousands of attendees each year. In reality, the word nerd is even inaccurate in that it was supposedly, no one's really sure of its origin, but in 1951, or sorry, 1950s, the first documented use in the book If I Ran the Zoo by Dr. Seuss, and he described this bird as a nerd, called the nerd bird. However, a year later, Newsweek used the word nerd in a slang way, saying that it meant someone who is boring or is a square. So, in reality, our terminology is not your life. So the big point of this presentation, I wanted people to realize that nerd are not a bad thing, and it's something that we should embrace and encourage in children and students and friends. Um, Masi Oka, if I'm pronouncing his name right, uh, is an actor, and he said, being a geek is a great thing. I think we're all geeks. Being a geek means you're passionate about something that defines your uniqueness. I would rather be passionate about something than be apathetic about everything. So go out there and be passionate with no regard to what other people think about it. And as they say in Nerdfighteria, don't forget to be awesome.